Uh, I, it was brought to my attention. I uh, I know we talked about Jaleel Fields with his season-ending uh, knee. Uh, it was brought to my attention. You all asked about Xavier Pegues as well. He he had shoulder surgery. I don't know, two months ago maybe, and it slipped my mind. I apologize for not making you all aware of that. He's expected back probably somewhere around late October, early November. So uh, whether he makes it uh, or not, don't know at this point in time. So those those are the two guys that are. That are out. Uh, other than that, one day in pads, you know, the energy was good. It was sloppy at times. It was physical at times. It was soft at times, you know. So I uh, was happy with just the overall aspect of the practice. This afternoon will be the same type practice. You guys will see uh, the first 30 minutes with <clears throat> with uh, some stretch and some special teams, uh, which I believe you all saw that last time as well. But, it, you know, we'll do PAT field goal. Um, and uh, you'll be able to see some punt and stuff like that as well. So um, you know, ha- happy with uh, the 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 progress with the with the specialists. You know, I think Mike Molina is doing a doing a nice job for us. Uh, Billy Kenny's doing a nice job. John John Young, the new guy, has got uh, a fantastic leg. Now, what happens when live bullets start coming at him? We got to figure that out. But just watching the ball come off of his foot and punt, it 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 it, it looks really good. Uh, you know, ha- happy with the punt returners, just the bodies that we have back there. Guys can catch the punt. One, you know, again, that changes when bullets are flying at them. Uh, but we have guys that are naturally gifted at catching punts. So uh, you'll see that. And then we'll get into uh, to a tempo period, which, which you all see for about 10 minutes, which is just basically teaching our guys how to go as fast as they can, which means it'll look fairly sloppy. Uh, no down in distance at all, but just teaching the guys how to how to play fast. <clears throat> I think we do a decent job on both sides of the ball, being able to play fast and handle uh, defensively, handle uh, tempo as well. So uh, that that's what you see. And then for the rest of the day, it'll be r- very controlled, no live situations at all. We're not ready for that yet. Uh, still installing and still uh, trying to get a grasp on what guys can do and what some of their names are, that sort of thing. So. Still uh, very, very, uh, you know, very early in camp, you know, but like the attitude, like the mentality with what our guys are are doing. I think they're in fantastic shape. Just overall, Mike Joseph did, again, as good a job as there is in college football getting our guys ready to go, you know, and I think, uh, you know, the guys are doing great recruiting-wise. Couldn't, couldn't be happier with the 31 new bodies that we have. You know, these guys' bodies look good. You know, I think our, our talent is getting better. Um, and, and the attitude with which we approached off season uh, really shows, you know, the the overall health and, and athleticism of the guys that are out there is as good as it's been since I've been here. So that's where we're at. Take some specific questions uh, if y'all have any. Dana, with Piggy's and Fields, uh, concerned obviously with the depth of the defensive line. Yeah, it, it, it's concerning. We we moved John Lewis over. You know, we moved Chase. You know, bear hard over, and we signed uh, Lawless, Brandon Lawless. So we we did that for a reason. You know, with those with doing that, we're three deep. You know, so we got nine bodies. <clears throat> they got to stay healthy. You know, we can. You know, nose is a is a question mark. Having a couple of of young guys, Darren Howard's a, a really good player. We can move Christian down in there if we have to. We can move Johnny Lewis down in there if we have to. So, got nine bodies. You know, you got Pooler, which gives us ten. Um, Gonna have to stay healthy. Coach, uh, yes, was well, was good, uh, Coach Gibbs was saying that <clears throat> so far uh, the defense has been picking things up, maybe a little slower than he expected going in. Have you kind of identified that so far? Have you noticed that happening? Doesn't look like it to me. I mean, I worry about my side at this point when it comes to that. Uh, they're, they're lined up. You know, they're, they're lined up. They're athletic. You know, we're we're as coach is going to be critical. There's no question uh, early, but I'm not I'm not worried about him getting guys to understand what to do. <clears throat> Three practices into it, we've got 26 more. Uh, that that's the least of my concerns right now. Um, you talked about with Coach Wickline, you know, why he's helped move the tackles to wide the line, <clears throat> and I assume that's you know a pass protection thing. Did you identify before you brought him in that? Pass protection with a need, especially with the tackles getting that width of the pocket. And when did you realize that's an area for 
the, 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 when I didn't call a drop back pass for like nine weeks in a row. <clears throat> I mean, we're we were we're running the ball a good bit, but the passes that we threw, if, if you remember, was a lot of play action downfield stuff or screens, you know. So we we were we were a very 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 below average um, drop back passing team last year, and and I've I've made it known to y'all, our staff, with hires, with with how we practice, with the techniques that were. <clears throat> that we're coaching to uh, the the type of plays that we're repping to you know getting it through to our entire offense's mind that in order for us to take the next step offensively we got to be able to do that better. <clears throat> so you know I want to be able to throw the ball better and we're working hard on it. That's a combination of the tackles getting better, the technique improving, you know Skyler and the other quarterbacks being comfortable in the pocket. You know, I, I can't emphasize it enough. I mean, play one against Oklahoma, we we run a drop back pass, and a free defensive end comes through the B gap and hits him right in the temple as hard as he can. If you don't think that affects the way a quarterback plays, you're out of your mind. So we're we're going to get that fixed, <clears throat> and it looks a lot better. You know, and then the timing aspect with the quarterbacks and where the receivers are, that's getting better and better. It, it, there, there's a lot that goes into it. With that said, your right tackle looks like you got a nice competition going there. Speak to Lazard and, and Colton McKibbitt. <clears throat> I think Marcel had his best practice that he's had since he's been here yesterday. So I'm happy with his effort and his determination. He's he's going into his junior year. He probably got thrusted into the lineup a year earlier than I wanted him to. <clears throat> a guy like him that's a, that was a developmental guy that had to work on his body and get in shape and learn and be comfortable and confident and all that usually takes until about his junior year to figure that out. So he kind of got thrusted in there a little bit too quick when Yodney went down yesterday or uh, last year. Um, Colton's the type of guy that's like Yodney, you know, high school basketball, long, underweight, athletic, that that grows into a tackle spot quicker than anticipated. So Colton, we're really happy with him. He's smart. He's able to flip back and forth. We don't want to mess with Yadney on the left side. He's really good, you know. And then we don't want to mess with Marcel because he's really comfortable on the right side. So Colton's going to be able to do this and give us depth that tackle that we haven't had in a while. But if Colton's better than Marcel. We're going to start him at right tackle. So. Coach, you talked about being comfortable with Mike Molina at kicker. How have you seen his confidence grow from when he first found out he was going to take over the job for the first couple of weeks until now? Well, you know my stance on kickers. I don't talk to him very much. So I don't, I don't know what his mentality was prior to, like, the other day. Uh, he, he looks good. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm picking, of course. I mean, he looks good. He looks comfortable. You know, Josh is working himself back into shape. Um, if, if Mike goes out and he's knocking that thing through the uprights a bunch the first three games, then, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be silly to uproot that. So, you know, but we've never seen Mike in live situations. <clears throat> you know, Josh has got a history of being able to knock through big kicks as the clock is winding down. So it'd be fun to watch it, you know, and, and we'll, we'll chart it, we'll evaluate it, we'll see where they're at all camp. You know, it's Mike's job for three games and then we'll reevaluate it after that. Dana, how much did uh, Drayvon improve from his freshman to sophomore year? And, you know, early on in this camp, are you seeing similar progress from year two to year three? Yeah, he, he, uh, he, he was pretty steady. Uh, last year, you know, that first year he was, you know, hit and miss. You know, we, there there are some things that that w was concerning that first year. You, <clears throat> you know, the fact that he was out there on the field, you know, as a freshman was was impressive. Um, you know, last year he was he was much more steady. Uh, this year he's he's much more confident and he's overtaken the leadership role that that Carl and KJ had. You know that 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 was a concern going into the year. I mean, you lose some guys that are NFL guys, but we replaced them with guys that I think are equally as talented. That just doesn't have the overall experience, for the exception of Drayvon. 
<clears throat> so he's 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 he looks great. I mean, I you know he he's talking. He's uh, you know, he's he's leading those guys. You know, Jeremy Tyler's another guy that I've seen being vocal. That's leading. I mean, he's going in. He's going to be a senior. He shouldn't have played his first year. He wasn't quite as ready as Drayvon was, but he's he's improved over the last couple of years. So the leadership that we lost with KJ and 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 Carl, I've been happy with where Drayvon and JT are at at this point in time. The key is going to be when it gets real hard. When it gets really hard, you knew what Carl was going to say, and you knew what KJ was going to do, and and that that's what we got to make sure that those guys understand, which they're on track to do. <clears throat> and bringing four new coaches in is a is a you know big turnover in a coaching staff. How do you how do you integrate everybody and get them on the same page and and you know. Working together, it's uh, I, it's really not uncommon in college football. It's not ideal. I mean, you want continuity. I mean, there there isn't a coach in the country that says I don't want continuity. You want continuity. The good news is is the continuity that we have on offense and defense from a scheme is good. So we got a lot of guys that that have been in this program <clears throat> that we're going to be counting on to to play for us on both offense and defense that have been hearing the same thing. Uh, terminology-wise, schematically, for offense five years and for for defense for going on the what, what's this the third year I guess going on the third year so <clears throat> that's probably more important than you know uh, uh, not, you know not having continuity when it comes to coordinators and 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 stuff like that so. Um, I, I like how those guys are interacting. If you if you look at it, I mean, obviously, me and Wickline have a history, and we know what each other wants. Me and me and Coach Carrier have a history, and we know what each other wants. Um, you know, defensively, uh, Coach Capone and Gibby have a history, and they know what each other wants. So that eases the gap a little bit. You know, Blue is kind of the new guy that 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 comes in that has to learn kind of what we want. But he's his expertise is the technique aspect of it, and he's as good as I've seen at it. He gets out there, and both him and Carrier both. It's kind of fun to watch. They come, they come to practice in cleats. I don't know if I've seen that from a coach. So they 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 both come to practice with cleats, and they're they're showing the guys what to do, and they're doing the drills with them, uh, which I know that rubs off with the players from a technique aspect, you know, so. It, 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 we could be in a much worse situation when it comes to continuity. Then you lost a reliable blocking tight end in Cody Clay. New guys <laughs> in that position. What have you seen out of them? Do you have sort of change how you, you, your thought process and how you use tight end? Yeah, you know, we, we use Cody a lot based on fifth year senior, uh, played a lot of snaps. Um, you know, if you look at guys that have played snaps, you got Eli. You know, so a lot of the times that we would probably go 11 personnel, it's still really 11 personnel. It's just that guy may not be attached. I mean, Eli is not a guy that can be attached. <clears throat> Cody got so damn big that he was a guy that we really didn't want in the backfield very much. Okay, so we kind of play to your strengths a little bit with that. Uh, you know, we may be a little bit more of a 20 personnel team instead of 11, but it's, you know, schematically it's all the same stuff. Um, it, too early to tell with, 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 with these guys. You know, Wesco, first play of, of inside drill yesterday, twisted his knee and is, is out for a while. <clears throat> so I don't know. You know, uh, Stone went in yesterday and, and, and had his best day of practice. You know, in Stone, I treat some, something similar to a young offensive lineman where you just say, you know, go graze in the cafeteria and go spend a lot of time in the weight room and get real big and. And then we will uh, start repping you when you're ready. And I uh, liked what he did yesterday. So, you know, we'll figure out what, who our best players are, and 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 you know, if we if that if that change is kind of what the personnel breakdown is, then who cares? It's relatively the same plays based on different personnel. <clears throat> Wait, Wesco is that for a while? Just no, no. Of camp? He's in a brace. You won't see him today. I know it's non-surgical. I just don't know what the time tape was. Coach Perry said that Gary Jennings is his most dependable wide receiver right now because he play inside, outside. You know, what have you seen you know, different from him? Uh, he hadn't practiced in two days, so I hadn't seen a whole lot. <clears throat> he, like, he tore – I mean, he, I don't know who threw it because none of our guys threw it real hard. But he caught it and it, like, tore that little 
web right there. So he didn't practice yesterday. <clears throat> so he ain't reliable to me. <laughs> Mathis is reliable. You know, he, he's a fifth-year guy that plays inside, plays outside, knows what to do. You know, Dekeel's reliable. He practices through a lot of stuff. He he um, might have a hamstring, but he goes out there and he continues to practice. He plays inside two positions. He'll go outside and play. Those those guys are reliable. <laughs> Gary fits that mold. I mean, he, he played outside last year. We played inside during the spring. He went inside all during the summer. He's back outside, so... I agree. He's reliable. He's big. He can make plays. He's got great hand-eye coordination. He's incredibly dependable when it comes to catching punts. I just want to see him practice. <clears throat> How do you use Michael Burns? Is he just the backup to Eli, or do you use him together at uh, it, We don't know. You know, he, he didn't block very good yesterday. Eli went down, too. He, he, he's got an ankle. He'll be fine. This is part of camp. You're going to see guys on the sidelines. If they're out, out, I'll let you know. But guys, you know, Eli went down yesterday too. So, um, <clears throat> so Ferns went in and, and got a lot of reps, and he needs to block better. So, you know, once these guys show us what they can do and, and the level that they can do it at is when I start making decisions on what our personnel groupings are going to be come, come game planning for, for Missouri here in a couple of weeks. Uh, landscape over here is changing as far as what this entire facility looks like. We get to get a tour later on today. Uh, <laughs> in the stadium? Yeah, what, what you, and, and the practice field and everything. But what you've seen as all this comes together and things really start to change around here, and how important that is you know, to you as the head football coach in this program. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rewarding, refreshing. You know, I've, I've been saying for a long time, I just want to be able to do my job. You know, I'm not talking about recruiting or any of that. Just from a day-to-day -day operational standpoint, um, you know, obviously this is very functional. You know, we still got to get the meeting rooms functional because we still got to break up into position groups, <clears throat> and it's not fun to have to talk over Coach Crook. Trust me. Um, the practice field's just great. I mean, you see our kids. You, you, we'll be in the indoor. You know, about five twenty-five. You see them take the field, and there's genuine excitement and energy about getting there. So, you know, it, it, we got space, and we're able to do everything that we want. We're able to practice the way we want to. That's all I've ever asked. Now, you know, I, 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 when did they announce this bond for the stadium? What was that, like two years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago. I, I, went, I walked it for the first time yesterday. So I could die. I mean, that's for the fans. That's great. I mean, and, and, and I walked it. I went down here. <laughs> and I went up um, where the Orange Bowl thing is, that banner, that Orange Bowl. And I walked up and I walked through it. And I go, wow, this is pretty clean. It's got space. And I know there's a whole bunch of restrooms and, and, and concessions and all that, which is, makes the fans' experience better. You know, and there's TVs everywhere. I saw those outdoor suites. It's great. They actually poured concrete and it was level. You know, and the fence, the outside fence was cool. Coming into the stadium, I think it's going to give our fans the same sense that it gives our players when they hit that practice field. Just, you know, it's going to be exciting. And then I made the mistake of coming in, the, uh, walking around the, the stadium and coming through the, the, the backside. And you, you forget how <laughs> it is. It's unbelievable. I mean, so, so then I walked back around this way, and I, and I walked it back this way to come back in. And it's like, wow, this is nice now. So it, the fans are going to be excited. I mean, it's 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 going to be it's going to be good. It's how it should be, and we're getting better and better.